Well, what a joy it is uh, to be here and to be able to share with you uh, some of the attributes of Christ that ha I have found through my life and events in my life. And um, I, I want to start by saying that I believe the heart of all uh, our challenges and questions is a relationship breakdown. Uh, the most important relationship we can have, of course, is with Jesus, but we are to be in relationship with other people. And some of these relationships we choose, and some choose us, like our families. But what do you think of Jesus? Are you aware of his existence, but not really connected with him? Or are you like me, you believe in him, he's your Lord and Savior, but sometimes don't actually live this out? And to be sure, it's challenging. Relationships are challenging. Uh, many things can distract us. So who is Jesus? I'm going to name a couple of characteristics. First of all, he's relational. I learned this many times over in my life. I uh, grew up in a family with an emotionally ill mother and a brother who had special needs. Uh, and added to this was an incident when I was 10 years old. I was raped by an older boy in the neighborhood. And uh, I felt, you know, very alone and afraid and where was Jesus in all of this? Well, he was right there. And although I didn't know it or feel him, he knew my secrets and pain. In uh, John, Jesus says, I will never leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And in Matthew, Jesus says, so do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will be made known someday. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them falls to the ground outside your father's care. Jesus provided friends and extended family who knew what was going on inside our home. And uh, our family, uh, my father and mom went to church every week, so I learned Christian principles. I had godly Sunday school teachers. Um, I didn't learn about a personal relationship with Jesus until I was older, but I had enough support to sustain me through uh, my formative years and through adolescence. And this was really important because I needed to know that I was part of something bigger and wiser than I was. Secondly, Jesus is peace and truth. After high school, I went away to school to become a nurse, and during those three years, nursing wasn't the only thing I studied. I uh, partied, and uh, I drank, and uh, got distracted quite a bit by those things. It was also during that, this time that I became engaged to a young man that I met in high school, but we eventually would break up. Two years after I graduated from nursing school, I became involved with a woman in a relationship, in a romantic relationship, and I thought I was gay. I was in this relationship in secret for four years. Remember, this is back in the 70s. And I dated men to cover it up. It brought tremendous anxiety and depression. I just wanted to die. I was so confused, but most of all, I wanted peace with God. And ironically, I had bought this woman a Bible and one day I was alone and I opened up this Bible right to John 8, 32, and, uh, which says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And I thought, this is exactly what I need, God. I want the truth about who I am. I needed peace to, uh, trouble my, uh, to quiet my troubled heart, and Jesus provided that. Jesus is faithful. In 2 Timothy, Paul writes, If we are faithless, Jesus will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. So about this time, as I felt my world crumbling, Jesus connected me back with one of my old partying friends from nursing school, Kay, who, <laughs> who had become a Christian. And she took me to an uh, evangelical rally, uh, Greg Laurie, if anyone's heard of him. She was living in California at the time. Steve was stationed out there. And unbeknownst to me, um, so I did accept the Lord. And then God led me to move to California. And I didn't realize it at the time, 
but I lived very close, or I moved very close to a ministry that helped people who were conflicted with their sexual identity and became very involved in that. Uh, Jesus became more real to me at this time, and his faith gave me the faith that I needed to make it through this confusing and dark period. Jesus is also a teacher. He showed me who he was through the people in this ministry that had changed radically. He demonstrated godly principles through people at the church that I would become involved in. I went to Bible studies. I learned about prayer, about asking forgiveness, about obedience. Um, I learned who I was as well as who I was not. And I have to say, I mean, this was a very long process. And uh, at times I was kicking and screaming. It didn't feel good. I was conflicted. But um, Jesus was faithful. He engrafted me in churches, uh, in a church with healthy role models. And uh, a Bible verse that points to Jesus in Isaiah states that although the Lord gave you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers are hidden no more. With your eyes you will see them. I needed some serious education and learning support. And this is why it meant so much to me that Jesus, the teacher, was instructing me in so many voices. Jesus is compassionate and healing. Matthew describes this characteristic. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like a sheep without a shepherd. So after I lived in California for eight years, uh, I moved back here where I grew up to Pennsylvania. I felt God wanted me to be closer to my mom and my brother. Um, and it was during that time that I had a lot of healing with them. Jesus showed me the truth that they were each very broken and limited. Um, but they did love me. They just weren't able to demonstrate it the way I wanted them to. You know, I had my expectations. He healed the wounds of my heart that had dictated how I related to them and what I expected of them. And his com he gave me compassion, which allowed me to see them differently. Jesus is gracious and kind. John 10 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save saves those who are crushed in spirit. When I was 42 years old, I became engaged to a man at my church. And at first, I was very excited and hopeful because I had always wanted children, and of course my biological clock was ticking loudly. Uh, so he proposed, and we went through 12 uh, premarital classes. Uh, unfortunately, after those classes, it was clear that uh, we should cancel the engagement and the wedding, and it was a, a really um, sad time for me because I had gotten my hopes up. But here again, as someone else mentioned, it wasn't a surprise to Jesus. He knew about it. And his grace and kindness meant so much to me because it brought comfort for my future, regardless of whether I was married or single or had children or no children. Lastly, Jesus corrects. In the past 20 years, as I moved through midlife, I developed some bad mindsets that needed serious adjustment. As I looked ahead to retirement and older age, I found myself getting sloppy with my life in general and my faith in particular. I had become complacent in my relationship with Jesus, and that complacency turned into cynicism, and the cynicism turned into escapism. What was I escaping from? Well, regrets from my past, for example, wishing I had made different choices when I was younger, disappointment that I didn't have grandchildren or children, wishing I would have done my career differently so that I could retire sooner. And then I had fear of the future, such as financial security and fear of being alone. Satan was having a heyday, and I was having a major pity party. My attitude at work manifested in negativism and cynical comments. Um, you know, being in healthcare for 40 years uh, and seeing all the changes, it's, it's hard not to get cynical sometimes, but it was really a negative attitude. And fortunately, my manager pulled me aside and corrected me. 
uh, we talked for 30 minutes, and I, I just knew that the Lord was speaking to me through her, and I started to cry and was really sorrowful for how I was acting. You know, there's a lot of younger people there, and um, I'm to be an example to them. So the prophet I Isaiah talks about God's correction. He prayed, uh, correct me, Lord, but only with justice, not in anger, lest you reduce me to nothing. Another manifestation of my negative mindset and escapism was a problem with alcohol. Uh, I, I never had a problem with alcohol, but I found that uh, I was growing inward, uh, isolating myself, and uh, drinking more. Last summer, I went away to a, a retreat just alone, and the Lord really convicted me about this. Um, so I've become involved with Alcoholics Anonymous, and uh, I'm participating in their program. It's very humbling, but it's just great because, you know, we never stop growing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk in AA about our higher power, uh, but I know that my higher power has a name, and his name is Jesus. And what a blessing that he's brought these course corrections to me. He doesn't want me to waste the rest of my life. So in conclusion, I've, I have sought to show you more of Jesus by sharing parts of my journey with you. And all these examples point to a loving Jesus uh, of peace and truth and healing, and he wants to teach us with kindness and compassion. I would like to end with a challenge to all of us listening, myself included. I'm going to read a quote from uh, Charles Spurgeon, who was a famous uh, preacher in Britain in the 1800s. Listen to this quote and ponder it for yourselves. I want Christ. I must have him. Nothing else is of use to me. I want himself. Do not offer me any other solutions. You offer me the empty pitcher while I am dying of thirst. Give me water or I die. Jesus is my soul's desire. Thank you.